What up, what up, YouTube? How you guys doing today? Today I got another great book for you. It's called Ethical Wisdom, The Search for a Moral Life by Mark Matusek. So this is a really a fantastic book. I've read it multiple times. Um, every time I read it, I get something new out of it. And uh, I hope you enjoy the core concept coach part of it. So let's get into it. Every book I do has three layers. First is the core concept. Uh, that's the main idea that I want you to take away from the book. The second is the theory. And the third is three action steps that you can take to apply the knowledge of this book to your life. So let's get started. So the core concept of this book is built around the idea that evolution determines your behavior. The millions and billions of years of of evolution that have preceded us, right? And and then the hundreds of thousands of years of human evolution uh, determine much of what we see in the world and how we see the world and what we do in the world, right? It determines our behavior. It determines the way we think. It determines our emotions. So who we are is determined by evolutionary principles. So what are the two basic evolutionary principles? natural selection and genetic variation, right? So in a competitive world, humans had to cooperate with each other in order to survive and compete against other groups in order to survive. So we'll get into that a little later, but another core concept is this idea that, you know, this book is built, I mean, this channel, this YouTube channel is built around the idea of self-development and personal growth and you might be asking what what use is uh an abstract book on morality uh what what use is that right um but really uh mark matusik makes a really good point in his book and he basically says that self knowledge equals the good life self knowledge equals the good life self knowledge is what you need in order to actualize the good life. And if you have a messed up system of self-knowledge, if you're in this delusional world, which I know personally, like I've had schizophrenia, so I know uh, personally how that is, then you take actions and your behaviors are out of alignment with the way things are, and then you end up getting punished for it, right? So that's the basic uh, core concept of the book. Next, we'll get into how, uh, the theory, right? What the moral foundations of the human being. So first is harm and care. That's the first moral foundation. We're concerned with what, who gets hurt and why they get hurt and who gets, who, who falls into our group of care, right? So, so we tend to naturally bond harm and care. We naturally bond with the people around us. So we care for them. Um, Next, we're concerned with fairness and justice. You know, we believe in just desserts. We believe that you, you, you get what you should get what you deserve. Uh, number three is in-group loyalty. So we have evolved to align ourselves and harmonize our minds and behaviors with the group around us, with our tribe, in-group loyalty, right? As opposed to out-group aggression, right? We're loyal to our in-group, generally speaking, but everyone outside of our in-group, we're aggressive against them. We, we compete against them. So uh, there's that. Fourth, authority and respect, right? We are hierarchical primates, which means that we focus on status and we listen to the people above us in the dominance hierarchy and we uh, tend to disregard, or not disregard, but listen less to the people below us or on beside us in the do dominance hierarchy. So authority and respect when it comes to moral foundations, that's good in a way if the authority is like the Dalai Lama or like Eckhart Tolle or someone really good, right? Someone who has an enlightened view of life, right? Those people in authority are good things. But if you have someone like Hitler in authority, obviously that hijacks um, this this tendency, this evolutionarily ingrained tendency towards respecting authority, and that leads to bad consequences, right? So that's number four. Number five is elevation or purity and sacredness, right? So elevation, our desire for transcendence, 
our desire for higher ideals like love, justice, peace, goodness, um, all of that uh, plays a fundamental role in the moral foundations of human society. That's traditionally religion has been responsible for uh, catering to that human need. So um, that's the basic theory. So actions that you can take. Most of these actions since this book is not so much a personal development book as much as a self-knowledge book. Most of these actions are related to self-concept or beliefs that you have about yourself. So the first is you matter, right? People who do not have hope are more likely to be immoral and take do evil things because they, they feel like their life has no direction and no hope or purpose. So you have to believe that you matter in order for your moral consequences to really hit you, right? In order, if you don't believe that ultimately what you do matters, then you're more likely to indulge in immoral activities, right? So you matter, and there's there's some evidence behind this idea that you matter, right? They say that on average, that one person influences tens of thousands of people's lives throughout their lifetime, right? You interact with one person who interacts with other people who interacts with other people, right? This YouTube video, if it reaches five people, I'll be happy because those five people will have knowledge that in turn they can apply to other people's lives. So those, that five will turn into 10, 20, 40, 50, just like that. Um, second, you have power. Self-efficacy, right? Believing that you have control over your life and that you're not just a pawn in some greater design or some greater game, right? People who do not have self-efficacy are more likely to commit immoral acts. They believe that they've been driven to do something immoral as opposed to making the conscious choice. When you believe you make the, can make the conscious choice, then you're more likely to act in a moral way because you're like, okay, I have a choice here. I have a choice whether to do right or do wrong. And I generally, when you reflect on that choice, you are more likely to do the right thing as opposed to just acting, right? Your beliefs create your reality. I say that a lot. And number three, consensus reality. Watch the reality that you plug yourself into when you are in a group of individuals, right? The group, you know, there's this other book called um, Mob Matters or something like that uh, about the power of mobs, right? A mob is just a group of humans who get swept away by an emotion and they, they do all kinds of terrible things. So you need to pay attention to the consensus reality that you are entering whenever you enter into any social situation. So that's, that's the basic uh, you know, breakdown of ethical wisdom, the core concept, evolution determines behavior, self-knowledge equals the good life, uh, the five levels, the five moral foundations of human uh, society, and then we have three action steps that you can take, that, that you matter, you have power, and that you need to watch the stories that you create in your mind. The stories that are being told to you in someone's reality, right? Stories create reality, your consensus reality. So, uh, yep, that's all I wanted to talk about. Have a good one, guys. Oops.